you got very good at jujitsu very fast. So you went, I mean, you told the story of blue belt and so on, but you, you went to black belt really quickly uh, and not just in terms of ranks, but in terms of just skill level. I mean, uh, you didn't go to black belt nearly as fast as your skill set developed. You were like doing extremely well at a high level of competition. So you're a good person to ask, how does one get good at jujitsu? We, we talked about solving problems at the elite level, but when you're a beginner at the, at the martial arts, how do you get good? How much training should you do? The very basic stuff, like how much training, how much drilling, okay. and then the mental stuff, like where should your mind be? How should you approach it from a mental perspective too? I'll just tell you my perspective on this one. I guess I would say uh, I feel, step one, I feel lucky to have found uh, you know, a good training situation, particularly f for the time, um, you know, in, uh, in where in where I was at, and uh, I drilled a ton. Um, I, I drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled. And um, one th one thing that's really important to understand, though, is that it I was able to in a relatively brief period of years go go from zero to reasonably good. But um, I, I think I probably crammed more hours in those small years than most people did training let's let's say in two or three times the length so it may not it may masquerade as something else other than it is i, I could say so you have to put in the hours yeah there's no way around that i i think so but um, what did you put in those hours so that when you said drilling can you break that apart a little bit sure. like what 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 does drilling look like is there any recommendations you can make? absolutely step one i would say your choices matter like uh there's a i think that one of the really important things that i think we should consider about jiu-jitsu is that there's a lot of junk in the system right now it's like jiu-jitsu is exploded in terms of uh the number of positions techniques strategies this that rule sets that's really cool on the one hand on the other hand there's probably a just metric shit ton of suboptimal things that are out there that are being taught mm -hmm. um i my, myself included i've taught things that are looking back five years three years two years one year where i'm like oh i would not do it like that anymore straight up sometimes i wouldn't do it like that other times i would literally never do even that particular movement um i don't think the shrimp is a real move uh it's I, it's a giant spiel and it's easier to show in person but long short of is there's a lot of things that are we think of as fundamental that i think that are uh really pretty negative and also you know um that's heresy in jiu-jitsu isn't it the shrimp exactly is like the holy we all worship the shrimp we love the shrimp we love the shrimp now, for people who don't do jujitsu, and you should, the shrimp is uh, you scoot your butt away from your opponent. Yeah, in a really, it's, you really describe it's, well, it's, it's like a really athletic looking position where you look like like someone that's trying to stick their butt out on Instagram, and then you mm. push your hands away and you expose your face, and then uh, you lay on your side because someone told you to do that, and you look like a, sh yeah, I guess you look like a shrimp. Yeah, it's like that time that, uh, you know, someone really credible told me to drink unleaded gasoline. I did it for a while. And then, uh, you know, it got to the point in my life where, you know, the next best, the thing that I needed to do to really improve my life was stop drinking unleaded gasoline. Yes. And uh, I, I would say that there's like a lot of stuff that's that's in there that step one is like, uh, it's junk. It's actual junk. And it's it's not only will it waste your time, it's it will straight up, it will it will be like an albatross hanging on you because it affects how you think about things going forward. So although um, I, it was, it, it's funny, like the operating assumptions that, that we we work under um, have a huge, huge, huge influence. You mentioned like growing up in the United States or this being a capitalist society, like woohoo, all right. Now, of course I think that, I don't really know any different otherwise. And I think that a lot of times people go, oh, communism is better. I'm like, haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't read any books about it being better, but uh, it's possible. I mean, I haven't experienced it much myself either, so I can't dismiss it outright. But I guess I would say it's a fundamentally differing, differing operating system underpinning and all of my choices, all of, if I honestly believed in that thing, many of my choices on a moment by moment, on a day by day, and certainly on a lifetime basis would be very different. So I would say that uh, it's tough when you're when you're young in the martial arts, and I mean, all of us are always trying to do our best to learn. But when you're young in the martial arts, you, you always go if you're a reasonable guy. What do they what do they call it? Like Dunning Kruger amnesia. I can't remember if this is the right one, but basically, you go like, "Oh, I know what I'm doing here," yeah. so I can say that's not right. But then I read a new story about baseball, and I'm like, "Oh, about baseball sounds credible," um, and it's it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't call bullshit if you're a reasonable person. You can't call bullshit on things that you don't understand, even if you suspect it's not right. You're like, "Well, I've got to reserve judgment." 
you never, ever, ever set aside your, your need and also obligation to understand why you were doing what you're doing. And don't ask why once, ask why over and over and over and over about the same thing. Oh, well, I want to shrimp. Why? To make space. Why do I want to make space? To get away from the guy. Well, why do I want to get away from him? Well, because he's dangerous. Well, why is he dangerous? And you can oftentimes get down to, wait a minute, I didn't even need to move. Three quarters of the time, you're actually acting in the other person's self-interest. And I, and I guess a lot of times I can't, this kind of goes beyond what we can you know, demonstrate here. But I would just say, uh, trying to understand what my base operating assumptions are and consistently reevaluate them, which can be freaking exhausting, frankly, and also sometimes confidence destroying. But you mentioned uh, that, I, that I did pretty well relatively quickly. I was at um, I started in 2004 and I was at Abu Dhabi ADCC for the first time as an alternate in 2007. I won a match there against the Black Belt World Champion. Um, and uh, the fact, frankly, the fact that I was able to beat someone like that was neat, but at the same time says a little bit more about what jiu-jitsu is and some of the issues with it than it does about how cool I, I am or was because that shouldn't really happen when you think about it. You're like, okay, you're, you're a champion at, at ostensibly the, a very high level of the sport you enjoy a three inch, four inch height advantage and a 35 pound weight advantage and you just got beat. Well, like that okay. should yeah. not exist. I'm serious, that I'm dead serious, that should not exist. If that happens, you're doing it wrong. Is it that I'm doing it right or is it that you're doing it wrong and there's enough variance in the way that you're doing it that you're allowing me to win? And now I did happen to win that with the 50-50 heel hook, which was 50-50, but, um, but basically, which was one of the early examples of like, hey guys, by the way, people can try to hurt your legs. And that was something like uh, we mentioned John Danaher, we mentioned like, you know, myself, Dean Lister, a lot of the guys from the Henzo Gracie team that have had amazing success. They've gone and done great things. Um, and, you know, Craig Jones in the uh, competitive grappling world, basically taking advantage of being very, very good in what they're doing, but also a glaring, glaring, glaring issue with the operating system of jiu-jitsu, which was, you know, a huge vulnerability um, in the lower body and not only not attacking it, but having no idea how one does attack it, which means you can't understand how to, how someone will assail you. So anyway, um, I, I guess to come back is if in the, in the absence of knowing what to do, I try to polish what I've got. So if I've got a knife and I'm like, I don't know how to use them. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sharpen the edge and polish it and make sure that when I need to use this dang thing, I'll be able to do it because trying to put together a system when you don't have an idea of what's going on, a lot of times you end up making you know suboptimal choices but as long as you're consistently reevaluating what you're doing and that's something i've tried to do over time uh, over and over and over again and try to seek out the uh the most um the the best and also most uh um articulate or insightful I instructors or people of, of various level doesn't matter if they're well known or not that could say hey ryan i think you should do this i think you should do that and i i think all i've ever done in martial arts is try to treat people with respect honestly try to um, demonstrate appreciation for the many, many people who have helped me over time and be the type of person that they want to train with. Not the type of, because we've all trained with people that make us think about beating the ever-loving crap out of them. I never wanted to be that guy. And I was basically saying, like, if, if I train with a black belt when I'm a blue belt and, and this person enjoys training with me, uh, that's in my interest. Selfishly, not only do I not want them to beat me up, but selfishly, I should, it, you mentioned being decent to other people. You want to incentivize being decent to other people, right? With yeah. the structure of what you're doing selfishly, I'm incentivized to be a nice guy, even if I'm internally a scumbag, which I like to think that I'm not, but basically uh, going like, hey, this guy's way more likely to help me, or this person's way more likely to help me if I shake their hand, say, thank you. I really appreciate you helping me out. And uh, but that thing that they tap me with four or five times, I'm going to ask them about it. And then they don't have to tell me, they're under no obligation, but I'll say, and will they tell me or don't, like, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, that that's it, you know? Okay, so to summarize, so, so what you d brilliantly described, I just want to make sure we're keeping track. So I went of all over the place. It's, no, you didn't. You're you're pretty on point. But uh, so the, the first thing is basically, which is difficult, I wonder if we can break it apart a little bit, is don't trust authority, essentially. Keep asking why. Be respectful that, without trusting authority, right? Right, which is, and then the second thing is be the kind of person that others like training with or like being around sort of... Uh, being a good friend. So, so many people just enjoy being around. So one is complete, which is, yeah, you're right. It's attention, which is like completely disrespect the the way that the things are done. So asking why constantly. One of it is your own flaws and not understanding the fundamentals of what's being described. And then once you get good enough, not understanding, uh, like going against the fact that the instructor doesn't understand. 
And, and my inability to understand what you're saying though doesn't invalidate it. And that's something like you mentioned, like m- me mentioning keeping in mind our own flaws, and then also again the flaws that any of us have as the instructor. To your point, and I guess I can speak to being kind of weird. I don't, uh, you know, I like to sit in the corner. But um, so everyone's a little bit different. Some people, you know, I wasn't terribly popular in high school. I, you know, like uh, I didn't like high school very much. But anyway, yeah, I would not going to be rude to people though. I was never going to bully anybody. Yeah. If you said hello to me, I'd say hello back. I would hold the door for you if you walked by, you know? And I would just say like simple things like that go a long, long, long way. And that actually takes us back to our uh, um, to our social discussion where I'm like, oh man, how do I become great at jujitsu? It's like, well, I'll start by not pissing off this person who can beat the crap out of me and not disrespecting the person who is probably the, the clearest, the closest thing to a font of knowledge at that time for me. So, and then recognizing that I should do that for its own virtue because it's the right thing to do and I should try to treat people decently. But beyond that, even selfishly, it's in my interest to do that. <laughs> but see, the thing is, this, this is interesting, is um, there's a culture in martial arts, a culture that I like, where the instructor legitimately so carries a uh, aura of uh, authority. And it's not comfortable to really ask why I, I'm not. It's it's a skill to be able to have a discussion as a white belt, the black belt instructor, of like why is it done this way, like and saying why again, uh, like yeah. would I mean it's a skill to show that you're actually a legitimately a curious and passionate and compassionate student versus like somebody who's just being an annoying dick who saw some stuff on YouTube. There's yeah. a line between to walk there. I, I I just wonder because like it's the drilling thing. I and mean, you know, I um for example, like in my in the, when when I was coming up, there was so much emphasis placed on like close guard, for example. Mm-hmm. And you might you might actually teach me now. I, I I don't know. But to me it was like why do I need to master the close guard? Like why is the close guard on top or the bottom, but the bottom really, this is the fundamental basics of jujitsu. Who decided like, that? My body is not. My body says this is wrong. I'm, I'm like th- this. Like I have short legs, but it doesn't even matter the length of the legs. There's something about me that just I don't understand how leverage here w- works for my particular body. Like so, it's just it's a feel thing too. Like it feels like in my basic understanding of leverage and movement and timing and so on, it feels like these certain like butterfly guard or even like half, basically every guard except close guard. I, I, I can play, I can dance. Close guard feels like you're shutting down uh, like the play that is I- Is that wrong? Or is that make sure that's what you want because that's almost like an innate characteristic of this guard position, but it's not sold that way, right? It's like, yeah. hey, this is a good guard. It's like, hey man, here's a bow and arrow versus, and you know how to use this thing, right? Like make sure you're you're far away and like up on a hill or something. Cause you could take that bow and arrow, run up on something and try to use it. But if nobody told you not to do that and they told you it was foundational, it's very foundational, it's very important. To everything else too, right? That's back to the shrimping thing. How many things are we taught <laughs> that even if it's not, let's say itself is not a, a garbage thing, might be effectively garbage. You could give me a Ferrari, but if I try to make it fly, it's not going to work. If you're like, like, here's a plane, here's another plane, here's another plane, here's another plane, here's a Ferrari. I'm like, oh, it must be a different type of plane. <laughs> like, you could be forgiven for for leap if we're going there. Yeah. You know, like, oh, maybe the wings come out or you just go fast enough. It's like a bullet. I'm like, you can make these crazy leaps in your mind, and people are doing that all the time. Mm-hmm. So if you don't provide the context for me, or worse yet, you provide improper context, like how. How much of a problem is that going to be? Well, I think the skill of the white belt should be just be nice. But so in the complicated human space of when your intention, at least on the in the big picture view, is good. There's the question is it's not always when your intention is good, the actual implementation of it is good. So you might be just almost, and and that's much. It's not the case for you. It's much more the case for white belts. They don't even know their intention might be good, but they don't know all the lines they're crossing, all the right. so they're not actually able to and like interpret all the ways in which 
They're being totally insensitive to the requests of others, like right. explicit requests of others. So your job as a beginner is to be a really good listener of those social cues. Well, it's like a visitor in a foreign country, right? Yeah. Like you're a representative of people that look like you, people that talk like you, people that have your passport, and you're like, man, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, I've got my foot up on my knee. Well, if I was in certain countries in the world, that's rude. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. But can you imagine if someone says, hey, I really appreciate if you take your foot off, that's pretty rude. And then I wanna tell them, well, not where I'm from, man. I'm in your house. I better, again, I might go that direction, but let's say I could get away with that. Now I'm a bully. And if I can't get away with that, well, I'm about to maybe be on the wrong side of something. But I, I guess, uh, yeah, like you said, if we have positive intention, that's fine. But I also have to recognize who I am. And I think that that's one thing that I tried to do and continue to try to do over time. Like we're, oh man, uh, hi, I, I'm the one that's asking for a favor here. If I spar with Raymond Daniels, Raymond Daniels is doing me a favor. I ain't doing him a favor. Let's not get it twisted. So Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. These are not, and this is not like some affected nonsense. This is serious. I'm like, mm -hmm. thank you. If I spar with Steven Thompson, I'm I'm the one being done a favor. George St. Pierre takes his time to spar with me, which he has in the past, and and not even kill me, which is really I appreciate that because that's why I can sit here. George is not a prop for me to 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 get my rocks off or see what's going on. And also, I'm gonna do that and then expect him to just take it. And I've seen he's a gentleman. I've seen people get nuts with George and and have him just be like. He has a, he's a patience of a saint. I, yeah. I don't have that level of patience, but I would just say to come back, what figuring out like, hey, so what, what role am I here? And that comes back to like, at least what I see people on the internet. Yeah, man, I have a beef with Joe Rogan. You're like, no, you don't, Ryan. You're some goof. Yeah. I'm like, I'm some random dude. Joe, like people want to, they almost want to like elevate so that we can somehow be level. We're peers here. If I go into Faraz Zahabi's gym, I'm not a peer of Faraz Zahabi. I'm a student of TriStar. I'm a guest in the academy. Yeah. And if Faraz asked me for something short of him, like, you know, telling me to try to do a triple backflip so I break my neck. The answer is, yes, sir, I, I can do it for you for us. No, man, yeah. no worries. And it's and hopefully it should come with, I guess, a level of graciousness. But I guess that's kind of one of the things that I see nowadays with uh, how accessible people are. Because I grew up, you know, being a big, huge base sports fan of all kinds. I couldn't send Derek Jeter a message and, and much less have a possibility of a reply. And if I do, it's like, you know, I have people send me messages. It's very nice that, that people send me messages. Some people, again, and everyone, not everyone is coming from the same place. But I've had plenty of things that are like, yo, dude, I need you to do this for me. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I'll tell you what's never going to happen. That. I have no idea who you are. And that was how I was addressed. And I don't need, oh, man, you're the greatest one because that's weird. And two, because I'm not. But mm -hmm. just, hey, Ryan, uh, how are you doing? Um, hey, do you think you could do the following if you get a second? I'm like, if I get a second, you're dang right. I can. Why not? It's easy ask. But it, it started with some level of politeness. And I guess yeah. like that's maybe being semi-Southern. Like I grew up in Virginia. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Like you. That yeah, well, the, the, and there's all different kinds of uh, implementations of politeness. I mean, all most of the successful people I've met, they've been, it's been surprising to me how much of you, you mentioned peers, like the like I could think of you, Joe Rogan. You mentioned Joe Rogan, but Elon Musk, they don't like they almost treat me like I'm the superior. You know what I mean? Like it's not even it's it's that's the politeness, like. You know, it, that's the approach. The feeling of it is like, I'm the student, I'm the beginner. I'm like approaching a situation like it's it, it's uh, it's almost like uh, method acting of like, you're better than me. It, that And that's how I approach a lot of interactions. Like I have something to learn from this, even if it's like a young- Do you like, think that they're ungenuine? They're totally genuine. They're it, genuine. But isn't that a funny thing? Like in spite yeah. of who they are, they're incredibly genuine because they respect, correct me if I'm wrong, they respect yeah. you obviously for what you bring to the table. Also no, no, they approach but everybody they, like but this. But that's what I mean. They, no, but they, I'm sure they respect for what you bring to the table. Beyond that though, they was, they're treating you with dignity as a human being. Yeah, as a human being. Which that's right. Pe yeah. And when they could probably get away with treating most people without a whole heck of a lot of dignity. Yeah. And I guess, what does that always say that like, you know, again, like you can always tell someone of, of, you know, of quality because they treat the king and the, and the janitor the same way. Yeah, that's true but that. that's what we're seeing a lot. Like, I, that was, I guess I don't mean to like to nitpick, but that's where we take issue, I guess, a little bit or, or disagree with. Are the you going to criticize with the, the internet again? I uh, know <laughs> uh, people uh, on the uh, internet. Uh, old man yells at yells at clouds. But uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, but I guess uh, what, what I mean is just like the way that people address each other because it's so casual yeah. now. Yes, you know, and it's like, it's great. On the one hand, it's nice. On the other hand, you go, hey, I just why can't. Do am I somehow diminish? Am I worried about diminishing myself? It's like the way that I'm sure that people talk to like talk to women sometimes, mm -hmm. and where it's, hey, what's up, girl? Oh, man, she's a bitch. 
you know, yeah. versus like, uh, how am I, that was supposed to get a good response. Well, yeah. what about that was going to elicit a, a favorable response, you know, versus being anything, anything other than, than just, yo man, well, I, what's going on? And I guess that, does that make any sense? No, that makes total sense. And that Southern thing that you're referring to, I, I feel like that's an important, uh, that's an important part of human communication. 